Hello, welcome again on my scientific blog Discover Social Sciences. Uh, today I want to go in some kind of intellectual freestyle. Uh, I want to shake it off a little bit as, uh, uh, as those last weeks I was writing a lot about investment strategies, about mathematics, about analytical tools. In my last update I took like a very serious stance on the COVID-19 crisis. So this time I want to to do something funny uh, and something which I hope will be intellectually funny and tempting for my viewers and readers. Uh, I want to, to do what I call talking to dead people. Uh, it is not spiritism, uh, it is simply me uh, who likes, I very much like reading like old uh, treaties in philosophy, all the treaties in economics, in social sciences, when I want to get some distance regarding the current events. So uh, this, is an, uh, this is one of those updates when I talk to dead people uh, and I will be talking uh, more specifically to one dead person, to certain Jacques Savary, uh, who in 1675 published a book entitled in French uh, Le Parfait Négociant, which translates into English as The Perfect Merchant. Here you can see the title page. It is what the title page uh, looked like, more or less. It is an interesting coincidence because uh, 1675, so the year of publication of that book, uh, was the year when both D'Artagnans died because there were, uh, there were two D'Artagnans. There was a real D'Artagnan, a real noble-born uh, French musketer, and there was the fictional D'Artagnan, so the fictional character created uh, by the invention of the Dumas brothers. Uh, anyway, this book, uh, this book was essentially a textbook uh, for doing business. It is like really thick. It covers uh, many, many points of uh, the ways that business should be done. And the reason why I use this text, uh, this book as uh, my favorite reading in history, as like uh, my favorite reference point, is that when I sort of dived into that reading, I realized how standardized is our social life today. Uh, when I read the writings of Master Savary, uh, it is a completely different world from what we know today. It was a world of, first of all, multiple social hierarchies coexisting like side, uh, like one next to each other. Uh, and uh, after having read this book, I have uh, now a very different view on what uh, the absolute monarchy in, uh, in France, in the times of the Bourbons, was really like. I realized that Louis XIV, the Sun King, uh, was... Uh, described as an absolute ruler because he essentially tried to put some order in that horrible mess. Uh, an example of that multitude and diversity of social hierarchies uh, which I found in this book is something sort of close to my heart because by my primary academic uh, uh, education I am a lawyer. I graduated uh, legal studies and uh, in this book I found a short discussion about one of the ordinances uh, issued by Louis XIV. And apparently Louis XIV was trying to uh, sort of put together around 17 different hierarchies of adjudication in France. There, were, uh, uh, there was around 17 different judicial systems working like one next to each other and essentially competing with each other. Uh, it is an e interesting example of how standardized we are today in our society. Today it would be unthinkable 
to be able to have the same legal case adjudicated across 17 mutually competing and parallel judicial systems. Uh, another point of diversity is the, uh, is the diversity in monetary systems. In the times of Jacques Savary, so in the second half of the 17th century, monetary systems were far from being as standardized as today. The very concept of money at the time was very different from what we understand by it today. Money at the time covered a lot of different systems, which once again were sort of competing with each other and coexisting with each other and getting your bearings and getting a good orientation in the monetary systems of the time was like a business skill on its own right. It was like a real skill that really served in doing business. And finally, there is uh, like one third big point uh, in that reading. By the end of the 17th century, uh, Europe or the European society was essentially in a state between a demographic slowdown and the demographic recession. Uh, it was one of those moments when uh, the when we, the Europeans, as a society, as a local civilization, we took those major blows, a combination of wars, epidemic diseases, uh, uh, bad crops or years of bad crops, uh, and it all added up to create like a downwards demographic pressure. And it's interesting how people used to do business in that context of essentially depopulating a continent. Okay. So these are those loose thoughts that uh, I wanted to communicate via my video. Now a reminder. Uh, in the description box below the video, you will find the link discoversocialsciences.com. If uh, you click on that link, it will take you to the website of my blog called precisely Discover Social Sciences. And uh, on that blog, you can find an update. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry for my voice. I had like um, a momentary extinction of voice. So on, on that blog, on the website discoversocialsciences.com, you will find an update which has the same title as uh, this video. And in that specific update, you will find like a rich body text description of what I was trying to talk about here very shortly. So have a nice week, have a nice Monday and until the next time. Bye.